Sonia did really a, a good job in presenting um, the Erasmus Plus program, which is um, uh, good news, uh, at least uh, for, uh, regarding the my presentation. It's more complex um, program with more um, actions and, and a bigger structure. So what is following now is um, um, a bit less complex. Um, and um, so good news. So hopefully I will not need so much time. Um, uh, so let's start. Thanks, Matei, for sharing. Um, I will be um, really, I, I, this digital technology is somehow um, still, I don't master it very well. So uh, while I will talk, uh, I will ask Matei to, to uh, move on the slides. So I will present the, um, um, European Solidarity Corps program, which has um, started uh, this year um, with a bit of a delay um, due to a pandemic and will take place until 2027. Um, this, um, in my presentation, uh, if you can, uh, Matei, go to the slide presentation overview. Yes, you're already there. Uh, in my presentation, I will talk um, about um, background of the program, um, about the object objectives of the program, priorities, uh, which actions uh, are included, um, about the quality label, um, as well uh, as um, which countries uh, can participate and uh, also uh, individuals, about um, tools that are somehow uh, used in the program uh, and um, different uh, interesting uh, or good to know stuff such as uh, project application deadlines, um, exam budget example, and what is important for your participation. So uh, Matei, please, uh, next slide. Um, so the program, uh, European Solidarity Corps is building on the past experience uh, of EU programs um, of that, that reach really far beyond. Uh, it's more than 25 years that uh, have been, um, the programs are with us. And especially the Solidarity Corps program is building on the success of European voluntary service. Uh, many of you who were um, uh, already um, active in the past know this program. And this was uh, somehow a program that left quite a big mark uh, uh, between the youth programs. That's why um, in somehow in 2016, the European Union decided to uh, launch a specific and separate program um, dedicated to volunteering. So before that, um, volunteering was a part of Erasmus Plus, and now uh, from um, 2016, or more specifically 2018, when the program became operational, we have a new uh, separate uh, program dedicated to, to volunteering. Um, as um, Sonia already said before, uh, this program is really also very much linked to the processes or political frames uh, that uh, are um, currently uh, in the EU. So this program also links very much to the EU youth strategy. Um, as well as to the other uh, policy frameworks for uh, volunteering. Um, if you move on the next to the next slide, please. So the objectives that the program is um, trying to achieve is, um, I will read the sentence. It's a long sentence in the program guide um, that I broke down into a few bullet points here. But 
so to read the, the sentence, the general objective of the program is to enhance the engagement of young people and organizations in accessible and high quality solidarity activities, primarily volunteering, as a means to strengthen cohesion, solidarity, democracy, European identity, and active citizenship in the Union and beyond addressing societal and humanitarian challenges on the ground with a particular focus on the promotion of sustainable development, social inclusion and equal opportunities. It's a really uh, um, all encompassing sentence, but uh, broke down into um, um, these bullet points hopefully um, um, it uh, somehow brings the um, emphasis more to you. Um, next slide, please. Specific object, if we break down the, the, the general objective to more specific objectives, we can again have a, 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 a sentence that goes like this. The specific objective of the program is to provide young people, including young people with fewer opportunities, with easy accessible opportunities to engage for engagement in solidarity activities that induce positive societal changes in the Union and beyond, while improving and properly validating their competences, as well as facilitating uh, their continuous engagement as active citizens. So here we see that the program is um, putting forward uh, two components. If I can sh say shortly, it's um, societal needs and on the other hand, uh, young people who are uh, contributing to the communities and by doing that, they are uh, learning and uh, also uh, being engaged as active citizens. Next slide, please. The priorities that the program um, wishes to address are very similar to the priorities that Sonia mentioned before. So they, they uh, tackle uh, the areas uh, of inclusion and diversity, where it's very important uh, aim of the program that it uh, involves in its activities uh, young people facing fewer opportunities, um, for example, to name just shortly uh, a few of such uh, like um, obstacles, disabilities, uh, health problems, uh, barriers linked to education, uh, social barriers, geographical barriers, uh, economic um, difficulties. So next priority that uh, the program wants to address is um, environmental protection. So ESC projects aim to integrate green practices into all activities, as well as promoting environmentally sustainable and responsible behavior among participants and participating organizations. Um, the projects also wish to address digital transformation um, as the um, Euro, uh, it wants to uh, somehow promote um, a digital age, uh, regardless to, to the conditions to, to people um, um, and to boost digital skills and literacy and enhance the understanding of risks and opportunities that um, digital technology brings. Next uh, priority that um, uh, programs want to address is participation in democratic life. Um, the program really um, promotes participation of young people in democratic processes and civic engagements. And volunteering is really one of the, um, we can say, um, main activities that uh, young people can uh, prove uh, or, or that they can somehow um, engage in to, to, to really exert this, this uh, 
participation in democratic life. By this, they are also strengthening and for um, uh, enforcing a European identity, uh, and they are uh, promoting the common values uh, such as uh, principles of unity, diversity, um, and as well social, cultural, and historical heritage of the Europe. Um, if we go to the, to the last bullet point uh, under priorities, um, prevention, promotion, and support in the, in the field of health. Uh, the European Solidarity Corps can add a significant value to the work uh, ahead of Europe and beyond uh, in addressing COVID-19's impact and recovery recovery, particularly when it comes to prevention, promotion and support uh, in the field of health. So it can, uh, in its activities, really uh, play an important role in supporting health and social care systems under, uh, under the current situation. Uh, you, you, uh, European Solidarity Corps should also aim at mobilizing uh, volunteers around these health challenges and uh, as well um, promotion of healthy lifestyle. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what is the structure of the program? Um, here you can see that we have um, two strands and within two strands, we have four um, possible actions. So within a first strand, you have uh, that is called solidarity activities. You have three actions, volunteering projects, uh, volunteering teams in high priority areas and solidarity projects. So if we first take a look at this um, strand, um, what you see written in um, gray is the, the projects that are applied to national agencies. And what is written in, in uh, red, uh, these are the projects that are centralized. So they are applied directly to the executive agency. The solidarity projects are not open to uh, partner countries. Um, because these are local projects uh, um, that cannot take place because of the partner countries not having their own national agencies. So it's good for you to know that what you should focus your attention is on the first two um, uh, actions within solidarity activities, volunteering projects and volunteering teams in high priority areas. If we take a look on the other um, side of the slide, we have a second strand of projects, which are uh, new ones, actually, and they are called humanitarian aid volunteering projects. These projects are also uh, run centrally, and uh, for these projects, uh, since they are new, uh, this year, it's um, start. They are starting. They are coming actually from a previous program that has now joined uh, to the Solidarity Core program. Um, some of you maybe know it from before, or even have been active or accredited for for this program. But now it moved here. Um, so as I said, this is a centralized action. And uh, since the, the, um, we are all faced with pandemic uh, and uh, situation is um, the pandemic obstacles in many ways, for this year, uh, what has been um, known is that the quality label uh, will, be, uh, uh, will need to be um, organizations that will want to have uh, be active in, the, in this part, we'll need to have a quality label, and um, this will be run by executive agency. Uh, next slide, Matej, please. So if we go a bit more into the volunteering part, um, you can see that um, um, this action is open for participants aged uh, 18 to 40, um, who are helping um, the, the main 
point of, of the actions volunteering is to help uh, societies uh, with their uh, needs. And this volunteering can take place either in Europe or in the uh, either in EU or neighboring countries uh, to the EU. Next slide, please. Uh, the volunteering projects are themselves split uh, into um, several actions, um, into individual volunteering and volunteering teams. Uh, individual volunteering is um, then further on split to short-term and long-term activities, um, and short-term activities mainly being um, dedicated to involve youngsters with fewer opportunities because uh, they need more support and they are more hesitant to, to go uh, internationally on the projects or they are unsure about the language. So the program here is to somehow support them um, by taking a step-by-step -step approach, by first allowing them to go for on a short-term uh, individual volunteering, and then maybe if they really like it, they can also go on the long-term uh, activities. Uh, if, if we are just continuing with, with the example that I just used now, um, also young people facing uh, obstacles or fewer opportunities can also uh, be more, um, um, it can be more appealing to them if they are able to go on the volunteering together with their um, friends from the local communities. So volunteering teams are uh, maybe a good solution here um, where they can um, go um, volunteer in a group of uh, up to 40 participants uh, and um, they can um, be there uh, on the on the mission from two to two weeks to, to two months um, this um, what you see also in the uh, last bullet point up uh, um, is that um, within the Solidar Erasmus, uh, sorry, um, European Solidarity Corps program, it is possible also to do individual volunteering uh, within country, but um, this, for example, is again not um, accessible to the to the partner countries so partner countries can uh, join uh, mobilities which are really international uh, which means that they are cross border activities for these volunteering projects you can also have a preparatory visit uh, if needed for example uh, if partners are new yes uh, mate you can go uh, further um, for the uh, volunteering teams in high priority areas this is the uh, action that uh, is applied direct that is somehow uh, managed and uh, applied directly to um, executive agency in brussels and uh, it's it's this kind of projects are are um, bigger um, they need to uh, again uh, include uh, minimum 40 participants per project they can um, be um, of a limited uh, uh, time frame, for example, uh, on a certain uh, festival um, or, uh, I don't know, a cleaning action that is um, bringing um, youngsters from, from uh, more uh, countries together. Um, and this, um, um, again, here, uh, what is possible to um, to, to, to get as a support as a project partner is to, to have a preparatory visit and as well um, to organize um, alongside or on the side of the, the main action, um, also complementary activities that are usually um, dedicated to, to bringing more um, um, promotion to the um, um, event and also um, that aimed to to get a bigger impact in the communities that were included next slide please 
and if we go then to to the new um strength within a european solidarity core we have um, um, projects that are focusing on humanitarian aid where um, participants uh, aged 80 to 35 can be included um, you can see the, the the or spot the difference that um, in previous projects of volunteering youngsters uh, up to 30 can be included here it's uh, 35 and um, the um, the activity uh, is actually um, taking place in the the uh, country um, uh, of f f uh, like uh, how can I say a partner country and so not the 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 member country uh, because the split uh, of of roles among partners uh, is uh, that. Uh, humanitarian projects uh, are addressing the the needs of of um, of uh, like um, more um, burning humanitarian uh, actions. Uh, let me just quickly see uh, yeah, here. Um, so, um, given the the significant increase in global humanitarian uh, needs, and with a view to enhance the promotion of solidarity and the visibility of humanitarian aid among union citizens. There is a need uh, to develop solidarity between member states and with third countries affected by man-made or natural disasters. So contributing to assistance to people, contributing assistance to people and communities outside the union is in need of humanitarian aid based on the fundamental principles of neutrality, uh, humanity, independence and impartiality is the important expression of solidarity. So maybe you can also, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit visible uh, uh, to you, I guess, that this action is new and is uh, needs quite um, to we need to see how it will really be run in the practice so for this year um, it will not be open it will only start uh, with the next year mm. so we still have some time to really explore and follow up the the developments here um, so far what is um, um, known is that um, 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 until 22nd of September, the organizations uh, will have to apply for the uh, quality label to the uh, uh, executive agency. So in the next months, this kind of information will start uh, to slowly be built. So um, we will somehow follow it. And we also ask you to, to follow um, the information here if you are interested in taking part of this. Um, strength. Uh, next slide, please, Mate. So if we go a bit back to general um, frame of the European Solidarity Core program, um, what are, uh, let's take a look of what are important characteristics. The important characteristics are uh, definitely uh, volunteering. Um, in EST, so European Solidarity Corps, volunteering is um, defined as full-time unpaid activities, activity that has a duration of up to 12 months and contributes to the achievement of common good. Um, volunteering is one of the most visible manifestations of the solidarity. Important characteristic of, of the program is non-formal and uh, informal learning. So uh, young people, while participating on these projects, they are learning in the international environment um, um, out of the for, uh, usual formal uh, education setting. And this kind of learning is um, voluntary and learners based so the impact of such learning is uh, expected to be to be really um, bigger um, uh, enhanced by 
just these uh, components that I said. So the informal learning uh, is also important here because young people are staying uh, in these projects um, away from their home um, 24 hours a day. So you can imagine that this kind of experience really um, um, brings uh, or leaves a big impact on, on a young person. Just a moment, I will just sip a, a, a cup of uh, water. So um, learning is really a, an important characteristic of, of projects uh, within Solidarity Core. And um, it needs to be structured and it needs to have um, goals um, that young people and uh, participating organizations want to achieve. And um, here I can mention uh, only two things that many of you will definitely um, know. It's Youth Pass and Europass. So um, tools that are somehow uh, here for, to support organizations and young people uh, in recognition and uh, recording of the things that they learned uh, on the projects. Uh, projects within Solidarity Core, they also um, have to have a, a clear, clearly uh, expressed uh, European added value um, through their transnational character. Um, um, they are somehow um, presenting um, people with, with uh, uh, opinions and I remember Gideon said that um, his project uh, is uh, he really likes the project because it um, um, it enables richness of approaches so for example he uh, he and and um, um, Evelyn they are bringing uh, into Kosovo uh, um, our community also um, uh, their Dutchness and their uh, intercultural um, approach to, to, to seeing the things. So international dimension is um, can also be put uh, into uh, um, this that I have just said now, multilingualism uh, as well, because the, the, the projects um, uh, run uh, under the, this frame. Uh, are uh, including different uh, people from different uh, youngsters from different communities. So multi multilingualism is um, uh, really uh, an um, uh, characteristic that uh, is important. Also, European Union wants to um, somehow equip young people for for the the labor markets. Uh, so by by learning new languages uh, and and new skills, they are uh, young people are able to to better face the uh, challenges um, that they are presented uh, when trying to to go uh, or to transfer to the work um, um, life. So. Um, the last thing that uh, I can uh, mention here under the important characteristic is uh, protect, protection and safety of participants. Um, here, um, um, in, in uh, a project within European Solidarity Corps should uh, uh, assure safe environment which respects and protects the rights of all persons of persons, their physical and emotional integrity, their mental health and well-being. Um, here, um, I can mention that um, uh, young people uh, participating in the projects are uh, insured uh, um, and they can, um, um, so insured in, in, in terms of health insurance, but also the insurance that covers any other uh, aspect of life that can uh, in in a bigger period of time of living abroad uh, uh, go wrong and is needed. Uh, next slide, please. Um, um, about the important characteristics of the program, I should mention definitely uh, a European uh, Solidarity Core portal, which is um, established on the European Youth Portal. Uh, and which is bringing people together 
um, uh, as well as the organizations. It's some kind of a meeting point uh, for young people and organizations um, to really um, um, somehow um, on the other, on one hand, you have young people who want to um, uh, experience new things, contribute to the society. And on the other hand, you have organizations who are able to offer these kind of opportunities to young people. So both organizations and young people need to be registered. And um, through this uh, hub, uh, all the activities uh, are um, uh, linked, um, promoted, uh, and also uh, established. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I also mentioned uh, already before a bit um, how uh, learning is important within the um, so European Solidarity Corps. So here, uh, just a brief um, uh, presentation of what all is uh, available um, to, 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 to the young person, what kind of support structure around. So um, general uh, online training is actually quite a new thing. I think it was established more um, um, so that it uh, started to live in practice uh, with this year, with the beginning of this year. So young people who are registering on the portal, they can already before um, going to the, uh, their, uh, or when, while, while they are waiting or still trying to get to the uh, volunteering project, they can already uh, benefit from the sessions that are preparing them for the volunteering on this portal. Then when uh, youngsters are already on the, the project, um, they have uh, other uh, things available to, to support their um, living and uh, being in the country. So there is lang language learning support, we also um, at our Salto, but also at other regional Saltos, uh, we are also organizing uh, training and evaluation cycle. So for example, volunteers who have uh, their projects longer than two months, they are also um, coming to the on arrival training that is organized by our Salto, uh, just as one example. A mentor is a person that um, uh, each volunteer should have uh, in its project and is supporting uh, um, many aspects of, of a volunteers' uh, um, um, life in, in the hosting community, like integration, uh, also helping with the conflict uh, situation, and also, um, again, helping with the learning. Um, uh, for example, introducing the youth pass uh, and um, stimulating the volunteer to, to really um, have um, the, the learning uh, on the, how can I say, um, on the conscious level. Um, as I already mentioned before, the, the uh, program also uh, foresees insurance and also uh, visa and resident permits. So any kind of uh, papers or, or administration things that are needed uh, for the living of the volunteer, this can be and is uh, actually uh, uh, supported by the program uh, also financially. Next slide, please. Which are uh, who are uh, which are the countries that are eligible to join the program? Um, uh, similarly to what uh, we heard before from the Erasmus Plus presentation, we can also mention here. Um, 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 so, as applicants, uh, only organizations from program countries can uh, act and also the countries that have decided to, to join the, the, the program as full members, such as uh, Iceland, uh, North Macedonia, Liechtenstein, and Turkey. So uh, countries from, from uh, partner regions are able to, to participate in the projects uh, as partners. So uh, in, in case of Western Balkans, the following countries uh, are, um, able to participate Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro and uh, Serbia. Next slide, please. 
Uh, and in order to participate to the programs, um, organizations need to have um, quality label. Um, it's a bit different for, for um, two uh, strands, as, as you can imagine. Um, so for the volunteering projects, um, organizations need to have a um, quality label that is either for host or support role. Um, this um, is um, something that um, is uh, also uh, has been established in the past, so is just continuing. What is new within this program is that um, a new role has been established and it's for lead organization. Um, which goes pretty much to 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 the um, along with what Sonia said uh, before about the accreditation and um, somehow um, uh, ensuring uh, easier access to to funds to the organizations um, that that are um, strong in their capacities and experienced. So this lead organization is. Um, role will be uh, now actually um, open for the program countries organizations and um, what is in, important here is that um, uh, organizations from the partner region um, um, have good partners who can apply for these projects so it's really crucial that uh, you either as a, a experienced organization or as a newcomer have stable partnerships with uh, the organizations from, from uh, member countries who can apply. On the other hand, uh, you have a humanitarian aid volunteering project where you will have um, two roles, um, quality label for support role, which will be available to organizations from program countries and quality label for host role, which will be available for organizations from non-program countries. Uh, for this quality label, you will, as mentioned before, need to apply to the executive agencies. And um, also within the guide, uh, it is um, said that organizations who have been previously accredited for this program uh, would either keep their uh, um, quality label also uh, for the um, for the future, or will need to go through uh, some kind of uh, easier or, or um, simpler uh, procedure to get the new quality label. Next slide, please. Mm. What I mentioned before, that is um, the the new uh, really. Uh, um, um, big thing that actually is somehow um, affecting uh, how the program will run in the future is um, the introduction of, of um, the role of lead organization. So um, this we, we actually don't know uh, how it will work in the future. Um, but what is uh, important um, is that um, with this, uh, European Commission is trying to, to reduce administrative burden for national agencies and for, for beneficiaries who have a uh, well uh, um, running system of, of uh, projects, of volunteering projects, so that they will be awarded um, with the easier access to the um, uh, funds. So standard uh, project application is no longer available within uh, European Solidarity Corps. So it's an, now it's annual grant request. There will be two deadlines per year in the future um, foreseen and uh, an organization will uh, apply only to one deadline, an annual grant request, for example, for, I don't know, 20, 30 uh, projects um, for young people and based on the scoring from their quality label application for this lead role, they will be um, uh, their, uh, they will be given the grant. Later on, when the um, implementation period is, is is longer, so the first projects are already implemented, 
um, what will count is uh, performance of the organization. So if an organization performs well with their volunteering project, they will um, be somehow rewarded and kept financing. But uh, if, for example, uh, um, there will be some um, uh, difficulties in the project, this will also be then reflected in the finances. Um, next slide, please, Matei. Uh, project deadlines, we were uh, briefly talking uh, a bit already a few times. So for volunteering projects, there are two project deadlines uh, per year. Uh, and for volunteering teams uh, in high priority areas, it's one. Um, this, this one uh, is um, applied directly to the executive agency in, in Brussels. Uh, here I can mention that for volunteering projects, um, the first deadline is again very soon. Um, the, the deadlines are a bit different from the Erasmus Plus deadlines. And here uh, on the first deadline, projects have to start between 1st September and uh, end of the year uh, this year. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. And here we are actually uh, approaching to, to the, um, there are two, I think, slides more um, uh, to the end of the presentation. I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of um, typical um, uh, finances of a, of a project. Here we have a, a project that is um, individual long-term volunteering project, where, for example, uh, a young person from Germany uh, from Berlin goes to Montenegro for six months. So you can see that the travel costs uh, are um, as um, calculated by the travel distance. But here again, um, uh, the green travel is rewarded. So if uh, a young person comes by plane, they, uh, he or she gets 275 euros for both ways, or if in case he or she decides to go um, using some more uh, green travel, um, they will get free, uh, 320 euros. Organization will get um, 16 euros per day for, for uh, each uh, of the volunteering day. Uh, and the, the project management cost that the organization can get is uh, 225 per participant in the individual volunteering. Um, since this project is, is um, not involving um, um, young person with fewer opportunities or with a, um, disability, the inclusion support uh, is, is uh, zero here. But otherwise, the projects um, that aim to include uh, young people with fewer opportunities, they uh, are also rewarded uh, financially for this. The pocket money is um, prescribed. So within the program guide, you uh, can read that for the Montenegro, uh, a volunteer can get uh, three euros per day, uh, as well as actually for all other uh, partner countries. It's, it's um, uh, common uh, unit rate. Uh, language support uh, is um, given also. Uh, so um, for language learning of the participant, organization can get 150 euros and they are flexible in providing the, the format of, of this learning. So what can they offer within this money and according to their um, Capa uh, like uh, um, understanding or uh, capacities that they have. Um, exceptional costs are uh, very important uh, when it comes to projects with um, uh, partner countries. So you need to uh, um, uh, somehow bring attention of your partners from, from program countries that um, this kind of costs for um, visa, residence permits, vaccinations uh, needs to be put uh, uh, in the application forms or foreseen uh, in, 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 in uh, advance so that they are also then eligible when it comes to them to be financed. Um, 
again here uh, uh, an, an organization where um, for example a new a, a new uh, um, project partnership where organizations don't uh, know each other very well and um, want to see how it will go they can have a prepar preparatory visit and for this preparatory visit uh, there is this uh, kind of uh, eligible criteria that uh, wait i have it somewhere um, that only um, um, participating organizations member can can join uh, this visit and uh, uh, it's for young people with fewer opportunities. So only case of, of uh, this project involves a young person with fewer opportunities. Um, next slide, please, Matei. So now we are actually uh, approaching the end of the presentation. And similarly to what uh, Sonia has um, somehow um, advised you to do is uh, I have uh, here a bit formulated um, different advices of uh, what is important and how you can act um, uh, for a future engagement in the program. So let's um, see for example, here for an inexperienced organization, for a newcomer from, from Western Balkans, already having a quality label, um, you can um, search for, for different types of support through our contact points. Um, also uh, participate to various support activities that we organize as a resource center, but also activities that are offered uh, by the network of, of national agency on the European training calendar. And for example, for a newcomer, we have a specifically um, um, uh, like a targeted measure that is a body support system where we link um, or where we support um, organization that is having um, accreditation in the first steps of the of the program. So I wouldn't go into uh, uh, other uh, details for other um, 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 because I think we have really uh, I had long presentation. So in this way, these presentations, I think uh, we will also um, share with you. So I invite you to, to read um, also the, the parts that are uh, mentioned here so that they are corresponding to, to your situation. Um, I would really like to uh, thank you for your attention. And now uh, I hand in back the word uh, to the uh, facilitators. Thank you very much, uh, Andre. Uh, yes, we are a bit tight of uh, with time, uh, so I would say. Let me check. I also see that there are a few questions in the Padlet that are specific for the Western Bal for the Solidarity Corps. So, can a person from a non-EU program country volunteer in Western Balkans? So, for example, from Turkey to Montenegro. Yes, from Turkey to Montenegro, yes, because more, uh, Turkey is a program country, although it's not an uh, um, EU member. Are so, there any rules regarding the sending costs or it's up to the organizations to agree on this? For the sending cost, this is um, still up to the organizations to decide. Uh, and um, it is one of the things that were somehow established uh, or it, it's still kept to, to, to agreement between organizations. It's and, the, and the 225 euros, is it once per time, once for the project, or it's uh, monthly for the project management costs? It's once per month. No, no not once per month, per, per project. It's a per project, it's yeah. our management cost. Good, yeah, I see that there are also a few more questions, but yeah, we put Pick, pick point view, and we will respond to all of them a bit more detailed throughout the Padlet.